up, yo? With the news that came out yesterday about Nate, just what were your thoughts on on that parting of ways? Yeah, obviously not uh, not all happy. I understand it's business of basketball, so it's a, it's a level of just understanding, but definitely not happy to see Nate go. Um, I feel like he's you know, a great coach, uh, the relationship we had, and uh, just the things that I was able to learn from him, and obviously his tenure uh, I and mean, his uh, resume mm -hmm. as a coach and a player um, speaks volumes. So. I said business of basketball, but uh, you know things happen. But definitely appreciate everything Coach has done for me. Um, one thing that was mentioned was that his voice seemed like it wasn't resonating throughout the locker room. I guess what was the disconnect between what he was kind of trying to preach and putting it into action? You know, I feel like uh, me personally, sometimes with teams that are younger, right? Me being a, a veteran at 25 and CC, and I think Bogey is probably the oldest guy. Um, Coach Mack is more so. Um, I'd say suited for guys who are in a different part of their careers. Yeah. Um, and just us being as young as we are, we feel like we need to focus on just a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I really feel like, you know, it wasn't more so the, the basketball, just where we're at mm -hmm. mentally. Um, that's, that was the biggest gap. So uh, do what you can. We do, we'll do what we can. I'm sorry, I kind of lost you a little bit there. I mean, do you, do you acknowledge that maybe. Um, Saying some guys quit on them might be a little strong, but do you, or do you think that's not too strong? Uh, or do you think there was a disconnect in his messaging and what it was being received or not? I mean, I feel like everybody is going to be, you know, on board with all of anyone's decisions or anything, right? But um, I, I'm saying more so in terms of, you know, what Nate was asking from us as a group and where we are mentally. Um, Professionally, you know, at, you know, in years, in terms of years and experience, um, just sort of trying to create the divide of the expectation versus what where we are um, and where we had developed to as as players, young, as young players. So, um, as I said, I feel like Nate is a little bit more suited for just guys who are older. You know what I mean and understand the game. Whereas um, the young team, we need guidance, um, and I feel like we um, need a different kind of guidance. Um, and hopefully somebody can, you know, our new coach can come in and bring that spark. Um, but obviously we still respect and appreciate everything that Nate has done for us. But that connection was there two years ago. Did things, was that just a, an outlier? Uh, just you, you know, for me to speak on that, we have a different roster now. So, you know what I mean? Dif things are going to be different. You know, he can't coach the same because we don't have the same guys. You know, okay. I'm one that likes to, you know, if it ain't broke, no, don't fix it. Uh, but. You know, it's another story for another day. But that, that's my opinion. We have a different team. You have to try to do different things to, you know what I mean, make it work with the, with the roster you have. So, What type of guidance do you guys need? Um, well, first off, development. You know, I feel like we're all young. We want to develop into the best players we can be. So, um, you know, what we do before, after games, and um, just being held accountable to a certain standard. And, you know, um, we just need to grow up mentally. Right? I feel like talented. We're, I feel like we're extremely talented in, in a lot of aspects with the basketball and what we do on the court. Um, but, you know, in terms of leadership, togetherness, um, the, the brotherhood, the culture that we have here, that's that's where we need to grow. And, and, and as I said, holding each other accountable um, and just making sure that, you know, mentally we're locked in in the right areas to, to succeed on the court. Does this remind you at all of 2021? And do you think that, that potential is there for this team too? Catch fire late in the season is that thing? It's always it's always there. That, that that spark and that potential is always there. I feel like this is one of the, the most talented teams in the NBA right now, um, as we have been for the last couple of years, and it, as well as uh, must be youthful. Um, so I feel like you know those that combination can, can be deadly. We just have to you know cultivate that in the right way and uh, give ourselves the, the best chance to use all our assets, all our talent in the right way. Joe has experience of coming in as the interim coach midseason and, and kind of giving a team a spark to get to the postseason. Just what have you seen of his experience and how can he get you guys there? Yeah, Joe, you know, real real cool, calm coach, um, relaxed. Um, and I feel like, you know, his understanding of the game just gives us some, some steady, um, some steady headway, leeway for whatever's about to happen in the, in the coming, um, in the coming future. So um, I feel like, you know, as well as all, us all being comfortable with Joe. Yeah. Hopefully, it can be a smooth transition. You mentioned guys growing up as leaders. How how does that happen? Like, what goes into that? Being held accountable, right? And um, 
being held held accountable in all aspects, whether it's from you know the organization to the players to uh, training staff, whoever weight room. You know what I mean? I feel like that's where you start is holding people accountable to not only their job but their expectations as um, men on this team. You know what I mean? You know, it's, it's the NBA. We're not in college anymore. Not high school. You know, we're expected to come in here and be men and uh, try to win basketball games. So, you know, I, I try to do what I can, but it takes a village. You know what I mean? It doesn't. It's not one guy. Um, everybody has to hold everybody accountable as long as, as well as me being able to be held accountable by my teammates and by my staff. So, you know, it's delicate. You know, it's not just something that you know it's magic, but uh, that's where it starts. Has accountability been a problem with individuals? Um, yeah, um, I, I definitely feel like you know we can do a better job of that. You know, um, it's not something that's can broken. You know, what I mean, it's something that can't be fixed. But it's definitely something that we need to, you know, come together on and, and be more, uh, you know, more strict on just staying, keeping our standards high. As opposed to one of the or anything. Never. Um, how does that happen? Does that happen in team meetings? Does that happen in the moment? How do you try to hold each other accountable without, I guess, letting the issue go by? Yeah, really, it's just not holding it in. You know what I mean? Um, whatever you got to say, get it out. But I feel like the the correct way to say that is everybody's different, right? Yeah. Um, you can't yell at certain guys. You can yell at certain guys. Some guys need a touch on the shoulder. Some guys need you to push them and say, you know, let's. And it's all about understanding your teammates. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and that's where it starts is you understand your teammate and you try to, to lead through your understanding, through your relationship with them. Um, and that also comes with us, as I said, being, you know, taking more accountability in the locker room, right? And trying to, you know, be together more, be around our teammates more. Mm -hmm. um, in whichever way, whichever fashion, and we can develop a stronger bond. You know what I mean? This is, is how we build a, a great locker room, great culture. Is there empowerment for maybe some of the younger guys, like the AJs, the JJs, the Onyekas, to speak up and hold you guys accountable as captains? Yeah, you know, it's always tough because they're just younger. You know what I mean? And finding that confidence, finding that experience just takes time. Um, but, you know, I, I still try to hold them accountable. And you know, in their own ways, to to me personally, right? I can't speak for everybody. They they do show some forms of, of leadership and are growing, um, and are you know willing to talk and be held accountable. So, um, you know, that's something to start with. And you know, as I said, we just have to continue to grow and build, and uh, they'll get there. What what would be your vision for the perfect coach for this team? As far as what would he look like, and just kind of describe that person. Honestly, I've been trying to go through the list, you know, I've been watching videos and reading this and that just to just to try to uh, give myself an you know, informative background on who to, to, to say I would, but I honestly have no clue, you know what I mean? Um, not to say it's a crapshoot, but it really is. It's a delicate science to trying to find a coach who's able to, you know, manage personalities, give us the correct things to do on the court and whatnot and you know it's a, it's a whole whole 360 deal that comes with being a coach right so whoever it is I'm just hoping you know it works and that uh it, it clicks and it flows right um that's all I can really hope would, I would you want somebody who's more fiery type I want somebody who's gonna help us develop one and and, and give us you know show us a path to lead and win. Like, I don't really, you know, I'm not a big guy. I'm caring of what it looks like as long as it works. Does what he's doing for us work, that's, then, then, then that's the guy we want. You know what I mean? Or that's the guy that I want. The guy that's gonna help us develop and win. You know, um, whoever it may be. Awesome, thank you, JC.